CG works with village chiefs to give aid to communities under lockdown in Myanmar. Taiwan's National Museum of Marine Biology and Aquarium leads the way in research. I'm Sean Scallon. Welcome to Die Headlines. Let's get started. How do you deliver aid to areas under lockdown because of movement restriction control in Myanmar? Did you volunteers found a solution by working with village chiefs and trusting them to deliver cooking oil and rice, in some cases bringing aid right to their doorstep? Let's take a look. People moved the rice from the warehouse to the trucks and then sent it to the village. This is done without making contact with the villagers for epidemic prevention. We can't go into every village. Some villages have forbidden entry as the village chief may be very determined. We will then talk to the village chief and be very detailed about what we are doing. We asked the village chief to work on our behalf and on behalf of the masters to advocate vegetarianism in the village. After getting entry into distribution areas, great detail was put on epidemic prevention measures. This year's bean harvest has not been good. Many villagers who do part-time work are also affected. I'm really grateful that CG personally delivered the supplies. Under high temperatures of 40 degrees, aid was sent to the door of residents who could not come out to collect it. We have no job or income recently. We have to be frugal with our supplies. We felt sad when we saw little rice and vegetables left, but now I'm really happy to have your help. Cooking oil and rice restores their daily life with peace of mind. The poor can now see a glimmer of light during this very difficult time. Zijie is working with Beijing Zhaoyang Hospital for medical treatment for Tibetans suffering from major illness. Recently, three units also joined together to conduct screening of major diseases for monks and herdsmen. Here is more in our report. Although it is already May, the entire mountain of Yusu in Qinghai is still covered with snow. The local railway charity association invites doctors from Beijing Chaoyang Hospital and Qiji volunteers to conduct disease screening for monks in the mountains. I'm telling you honestly that the surgery will have a low successful rate. We'll need to take the risk together, but if he doesn't do the surgery, his breathing will become more difficult as time goes on. This monk, who had severe scoliosis, was aware of the disease like years ago, but he has not sought medical treatment. Until now, he has trouble in breathing and has to solve it completely. The purpose of the operation is not for aesthetics, but for stretching his chest so that he can breathe smoothly. For this ethnicity, if a member in the family has physical disability, he will be placed in the monastery. Hoping that once he wears the Buddhist robe, he will receive Buddha's blessing and has fewer sickness and suffering. Apart from conducting diseases screening in urban areas, volunteers also drove to the plateau area to help screening. People coming to do the checkup are all elderly monks. As monks often meditate, once they get older, many of them are easily prone to necrosis of the knee and hip joints. Also, there are many suffering from pneumatic diseases. 
This service was also provided for many husbands with inconvenience in medical treatment. In this time, I realized that there are so many people in this portal suffering from diseases. Without this opportunity provided by Ray Wang, I would not have seen and felt any of it. Different charity associations bear the same thoughts of helping people in the plateau at 4,200 meters above sea level, hoping that this medical love can bring in new hopes in life. Let's see how Kunsan Zhiji volunteers catch up with care recipients after two months off due to the coronavirus epidemic. In May, routine care visits restarted with volunteers reconnecting with care recipients, bringing them special buns. Let's take a look. Kneading, shaping, filling the dough, there are about 20 some volunteers gathered at the Tsuji Kunsan office, working away on buns shaped like a peach called longevity buns. Use your thumb to pinch it closed, and there won't be creases which enhance the appearance of longevity buns when it's done. May is a month of gratitude, thus Kunsan Tsuji volunteers are visiting their care recipients, and they have prepared a special gift. Uh, each year on the second Sunday of May is our tri celebration. We usually make a lot of longevity buns as gifts in hopes that when they receive our well wishes, blessings of all types may come their way. Sixth grader Yang Bingyu and her brother are raised by their mother. Yang's mother also takes care of her own brother and mother as well. All in all, the responsibility has been difficult on her. It was the volunteers' assistance that let the family see the light at the end of the tunnel. If it isn't for your friendship, we wouldn't be where we are today. These mother days, no one gave me anything, and the gifts you gave me touched me. Thank you so much, Chiji, for your love and care. The two children are good kids and also saved money to reciprocate the kindness of volunteers. It's money my mother gives me for allowance. I save it instead of buying snacks to eat because unhealthy snacking is bad for our health. And if we are sick, then we have to go to the hospital. Why not save it to help someone else? After the visit with Yang Bing Yu, the volunteers visit Yu Wenzhi, but only the grandmother was home. They still chat a little to find out how the family has been and also give them a Mother's Day gift. The monthly visits from Tsuji volunteers is the biggest emotional support for the care recipients, and this love will always be there for them. The outbreak of the epidemic severely affected the economy of many countries. Some Malaysians had no income and were unable to eat three meals a day to the movement restriction orders. For this reason, Zuji volunteers quickly mobilized purchasing food, masks, and other supplies to distribute locally. Here's more. Malaysia currently implements the conditional movement control order. Most industries have started to resume work, but there is a group of people in society who have been out of food because of facing economic hardship for a long time. Chiji volunteers are mobilized to buy supplies for distribution. I will have a salary if I go to work. If not, I won't get any salary. As I have no job now, I can't pay rental meals and children's formula. I can only ask for help. Thank you for coming here to provide assistance. As there is the movement control order, we can't go to work. So we have no choice but go online to search for Tsuji. I hope you can help us pass through this difficult time. I called yesterday and today I got your help. I'm really grateful for you. When we go shopping, we are very happy because at least we can help someone. If he is not in a difficult situation, he will not have the courage to ask for help. Wash your hands often whenever you go. 
GG Frontiers not only prepare daily supplies, but also provide masks and disinfectant wet wipes to those in need, so that they can protect themselves during the epidemic. Next, we launch a special report taking you deeper into the many museums of Taiwan. Follow us as we visit the National Museum of Marine Biology and Aquarium in Pingdong, which is not only an important location for marine education, but also vitally important in research and conservation work. In fact, it's one of the leading marine research locations in the world. Let's take a look. It's not just the beluga whale that is the treasure of this aquarium, but also the special feeding show. This place is full of surprises, as the National Museum of Marine Biology and Aquarium also supports important research. The facility covers an area of nearly 100 hectares. In addition to the three exhibition halls in front, that is what is called the backyard, where there are up to three research centers. This is the green loggerhead turtle. We were notified by fishermen when it was caught by mistake. You can see that its rear leg is damaged, and this may be a good example of what can happen when it was entangled in marine debris in the wild. Rescue turtles from the south of Taichung to Taidong are sent to this facility with a number climbing rapidly every year. While one turtle can be easily put into one tank, coral needs a much bigger pool. By changing it on a string, we can turn this space into a three-dimensional breeding area. We can save a lot of space for cultivation. Coral is very dependent upon light because all coral has symbiotic algae. If it is outside, coral uses natural sunlight, but inside we need to use LED lights, which we can control. With this special illumination and temperature control, coral is artificially grown on tiles as one pool after another is called a coral farm. In addition to conservation, there's also in-depth study of coral taking place as there are many as three to four hundred coral species, many of which had to be taken from the sea. This underwater unmanned vehicle is equipped with a camera and can be broadcast live images as well as collect samples. At a depth of about 30 meters to 200 meters, what we call the midlight layer, the risk to people will be relatively large. So we use these amended tools to first explore the distribution of coral reefs. And then we can use this robot's arm to conduct samples. Well, coral research takes place at the bottom of the sea. With the deeper the coral, the more beautiful it is. But the current coral catastrophe is already in plain sight. The study pointed out that coral will be extinct after 2050. Facing it is the only way to preserve coral that is facing extinction. Researchers are taking the lead worldwide by freezing coral's reproductive genes starting 12 years ago. There are currently 80 species that have been targeted, creating a frozen Noah's Ark at MMBA. Freezing at minus 200 degrees Celsius to overcome the damage of ice crystals, different varieties are subjected to varying storage conditions, which complicates the difficulty of establishing a gene bank. This will help regenerate coral with symbiotic algae. We have created the first batch of coral spawn with frozen and preserved symbiotic algae. This is the first successful example in the world. 
After being open for 20 years, NMMBA ranks number one in papers published when compared to other global aquariums, far ahead of the second place New England Aquarium. It shows that the power of conservation is being pioneered in the beautiful island of Taiwan. Today we visit with Xiao Qiyu, who has been working for eight years as an ER nurse. She is committed and hardworking, and even though the pace of work is fast and the pressure is on with the current coronavirus epidemic, she still remains committed to her work in the emergency room. Security guard closes off the area to clear the path. There is an air of nervousness around here. All examinations must stop during this time, and the one in charge is Xiao Qiyu, the emergency room deputy head nurse. Overlooking every detail of the transfer, nothing can be missed. Staff involved in the transfer have on their protective equipment as accidentally catching the infection is on everyone's mind. Next, one staff member pushes the heavy patient bed to send the patient towards the dedicated isolation room. After the transfer, the path where the hospital bed has traveled through must be disinfected thoroughly. When the transfer is complete, Xiao gives the order to disengage the lockdown. Since the pandemic happened, frontline medical workers have been shouldering much burden, but this is part of their calling in life. When the outbreak of the pandemic initially happened, the confirmed cases in Taiwan were on the rise and a hospital in Taipei had hospital right infection. It was especially nerve-wracking. To ensure Qualin is safe, Xiao does everything with precaution, as she's on a mission to safeguard life. Her strict manner has affected her co-workers to keep up. She wants everything to be the best of her ability for the safety of the department of the patients. This is why she is so strict on every little detail. Though she's tough on the job, there is still a soft spot in her heart. One time I saw a co-worker's snow was red from wearing the mask, and my heart dress broke. I immediately went to buy medical tape, so that at least there is some form of immediate protection. The fast-paced emergency room has exposed her to patients of all types, as well as work pressure. But Xiao remarks that being an emergency nurse gives her a sense of accomplishment. When a patient who doesn't have a heartbeat is sent to the emergency and you are resuscitating them, then you discover the heart monitor changing and the heartbeats are starting to show up. When you feel the pulse in the body, it is a heart-raising feeling. To ensure all the suspected patients are isolated from spreading it to others, the medical team has been on high alert. Holland to date is on zero confirmed cases, which is all thanks to the teams of medical staff across the county. For nearly two months, New York residents have had to shelter in place. During this time, Zigi New York chapter continued to serve every day. A total of 1,250 food packages were prepared and distributed over a period of two months. Let's take a look at how volunteers pulled together during this very difficult time. Here's more. In New York in May, it was often cold at 10 degrees Celsius early in the morning, but Ziji volunteers with missions could not be stopped. We regularly distribute every Wednesday and Friday. We packed nearly 80 copies today. There are about five to six kinds of things, including vegetables and fruits. Since the end of March, Wednesdays and Fridays are the days for New York chapter to pack and distribute fruits and vegetables. During the pandemic, Ziji provided the freshest fruits and vegetables for low-income families. The two Hispanic residents then on the internet that Ziji had food to distribute and walk for 40 minutes in the rain to collect. This large bag had to feed several families. We need some food, you know. Uh -huh. we, we have children, we have, with my friend, he had children too. So. Okay. And it's do nice, you have so. a work? No, no, no. Oh, not right now, right? I have two months, no, two months no working. Meanwhile, a group of volunteers are making semi-finished masks donated by Taiwan. 
The principle is not to cut its seams. The crime line can't be cut. These items were donated by Mr. Li Zihe, the owner of a company in Taiwan, so that our New York volunteers can have the health protection. This mask is really easy to use, very light and not stuffy. In the kitchen, volunteers are busy preparing the food. During the epidemic, kitchen volunteers still work shifts every day to prepare nutritious lunches for volunteers to strengthen their immunity. Volunteers send out food in multiple ways, mainly aimed at senior apartments and nursing home. Once a week, suggest fresh vegetable and fruit bags are the most anticipated by many seniors, and they are very grateful for such kindness. Thank you all. You came out to help us during this epidemic period. I really admire it. Thank you. Only Chiji can do such a thing. It is really amazing. After the shelter-in-place order was announced, the New York chapter has distributed about 1,250 food bags and more than 100 times distribution of medical supplies such as masks under safety protection. Keeping love and creating blessing were good spiritual indicators for us in the past two months. So we hope that the New York chapter will be our Zuji people's home and New Yorkers' support. We will deliver medical masks and the food they need to them. Tsuji volunteers in New York wearing blue and white uniforms, even if it's a war of care, a bag of food, will bring a new force of recovery to New York during pandemic. 29-year-old Ayo from Kaohsiung had epilepsy and developmental issues beginning at a young age. His illness prevents him from working a normal job, as he may have a seizure at any time. However, every time there's an opportunity to serve solitary seniors in his community, he's always the first to volunteer. Here's more. Carrying bags of rice and smiling, 29-year-old Ayo is today's ambassador of love. <laughs> They are full of love and always take care of us old folk. When a bunch of them visit, it fills us with joy. A teacher once taught me to harbor good thoughts, speak kind words, and do nice things. <laughs> he seems like a normal person, but what you don't see is his ticking time pump of epilepsy. You don't know when he will have an episode. It could be when he is eating, walking, or taking a shower. As it turns out, Ayo has epilepsy and some developmental delays. He's unable to work, but whenever the group visits seniors, Ayo always volunteers. He actually hopes he has the chance to help others and the ability to ask well. So as long as he is able, he will share his heart with others. <laughs> Not a whiz at words, Ayo still manages to make the seniors smile. Through offering his service to others, Ayo is overcoming his own disability. Tainan Dai Kindergarten made special lunch boxes during the Tri Celebration to express her love and gratitude to their mothers. We'll leave you with this goodbye.